Like everything else, the semester was divided into pre- and post-corona pandemic. In reconsidering the art produced by the senior visual arts students, I realized how sensitive and tuned in these young artists are to the ongoing issues that they grew up with. Gun violence in schools, terrorism, a seething civil war in the United States, and now the pandemic. I suddenly saw Brandon Gerber as a prophet and Anthony Davis as the new Walt Whitman. From the super realism of Sidney Silidor's paintings to the poignant gestures in the photography by Alexa Pignatelli, this thesis show is full of shocks, unexpected beauty, visual surprises, and even some gallows humor. It is the right exhibition for this moment. My project is called Psychology of Space, and there are three pretty large drawings of just uh, like mundane spaces that I experienced very heightened emotions. So uh, the sink, the shower, and also my ceiling fan. My largest drawing is like five feet by three feet. And so yeah, it's just um, large charcoal drawings. and. My largest drawing took me like a week to two weeks because I would work on it little by little. I mean, I did finish these uh, drawings way before uh, this whole pandemic thing started. I mean, I finished it maybe a week into, uh, like a week into March or something. So like a, a week after the, the New York trip. But so like my anxieties of the pandemic didn't reflect off of the anxieties that I was just experiencing in regular life. Now that we're like stuck in the house, these feelings that I've experienced when like due to the spaces that I was drawing, like I've experienced more, like more anxiety uh, because of this whole thing. I can't really go out. I can't really, I mean, I can go for a walk, but at the end of the day, I'm just stuck in my house. As I was drawing them, it was supposed to be like facing my anxieties and kind of like going literally like face to face to them. Um, in a therapeutic manner, so in that case, it's just drawing. But, I don't know, it's just, my anxiety has not lessened, it's just become more apparent due to our circumstances. For my project, I would say I had a few different ideas in the beginning of it that started around the fall semester. I had an idea that involved like some sort of Halloween-oriented, Halloween-styled animation that I was gonna go with, and I had already started making assets for it in the fall semester. Over winter break is when I really started thinking more in depth about if that's what I really wanted to continue the Halloween style thing or to make up something completely different. So after like just thinking of several different ideas, the random idea of creating like a 3D model town came into my head. And at first it seemed like, you know, a pretty, pretty big task, you know, building a whole town in itself is not just going to come out of the biggest day. So I wanted to just try to like model maybe, I modeled one thing one of the days over the break just to see how it would come out. And I really liked the way that it looked and I enjoyed the process. I eventually came up to about 40 models that's in my um, final project. And it was, I mean, it was just a fun process overall. I mean, obviously the situation that we went through kind of put a little damper on it because I wasn't able to finish the rendering yet. So, but I mean, otherwise all the models and everything I was luckily able to finish before all this happened. So, I mean, yeah, no, just the process overall was a very fun process. I definitely learned a lot, like learning new tools, practicing them more and getting better at the craft. My thesis is based off of Japanese pop song from 2008. It's a 10 year old song and I made an animation about it. I'm really proud of it. I drew every drawing in that from scratch, pretty much. There were a couple like uses of 3D models. Like in the beginning, there was a use of like a model that was like a music box that was 3D. But other than that, just kind of drew it all myself. In the animation, there's like intermission parts where the the animation style goes from like, you know, typical 2D to like weird, wacky cutout drawings. All of those were textures I found on the internet and just kind of edited around to do stuff that I want to with. Also, I use a lot of Clip Studio paint brushes because it, God bless Clip Studio paints brushes. I tried keeping it to like one drawing a day. So I managed to get it done like a month and a half maybe because I worked on it every day for 
for weeks. I have a lot of back pain because of it. My project is, it's about innate human desire, greed, gluttony. I reference photos of friends and family. It, it creates a more personal confrontation of these issues. And over this stretch of time, the painting style has changed and you can kind of see it. This one is still in progress. And I kind of want to make this one creepy. Like there's going to be jelly dripping all over. Um, and I feel that in a way it's kind of telling of these times because unfortunately you see the best burn on people but also the worst. Hi, I'm Rich. How you doing? This final project, when I heard that it was supposed to be a bigger project that shows how far you've come, I, for my freshman animation class, I made a sh short animation that I had a lot of high hopes in. I had a lot of imagination behind, but because I was a freshman, I couldn't make it to the standards that I imagined in my head. But now that it's been four years, I thought I've been meaning to remake it for so long. I thought, what better time than now to remake it to my full capabilities? And again, like I, I, the good thing about this is I already have and have had the story in my head for years. So I don't ever have to waste time on like what happens next. I know everything that happens. Right. So it's just, uh, it's just like some of those scenes, like I think the scene of the computer turning on for the first time, I rendered that like four different times, and the pencil falling, just because like I would render it, and I'd be like, I can do better. And then I like I have different versions of like what if the pencil falls forward, what if it goes straight down, what if this happens. I am I am going to have music and sound effects, but my music major friends, a lot of their stuff sadly got left to grapple, so that's kind of on hold. But I've made good friends with music majors and people from other majors that I could ask to help me make it fully what I wanted it to be. I'd say, first of all, just the quarantine, I think, in the end, probably helped it because um, it gave me a bit more time to really just, like, sit with it and think about how I wanted it to be. Um, and that kind of really changed some ideas and things. Um, so that was nice. But anyway, the book um, I titled Duende de Calle, I believe, just like Spirit of the Road. It's technically a hard cover. Uh, I put, I made like the cover and the binding, and then, then I, for the pages, I used fabric glue and I glued various fabrics in between the pages and then sewed them all together and went into the binding of the book. Pretty much all the pictures were taken on Route 17 in New Jersey, um, in like similar places over time to kind of show the differences as well as kind of. Um, look at spaces that I feel like just kind of were breezed over or were used um, for like more liminal reasons like gas stations or just like parking lots and things like that. I like just playing with really strange kind of portraiture and combinations of photos. I really like the book format, putting things together to kind of change the meaning of them. Most of it was done on uh, medium format film, but this page was all done on 35. I think I ended up being able to actually print at the school before um, it closed, thankfully. So then I just had to sew everything all together. I did my um, thesis project on nude photography. Nude photography is treated a lot different than any other depiction of the nude figure, like in any other form, so like in painting and drawing and um, with this in mind, I was really trying to emphasize the fact that nude photography is actually art and not pornography. These are just my images from trying to redefine it as like a real art form. And a lot of the artists um, I'm inspired by are for this project were like Ralph Gibson, Sally Mann, Julia Margaret Cameron, and Rachel Jump, who's a, a more modern um, artist. The color ones were post-pandemic, um, just because I usually work with film. And so I've started to integrate digital, which I really think you can see the difference in, I think, surroundings and how I think this has affected my work. I think it's it shows like the digital images, I think are really different than the film images. So I just finished my project last night, actually. So it's called When a Tree Falls. 
and my, my film has to do with deforestation and forest fires. And that made me think of the expression, you know, if a tree falls and you know, no one's around to hear it, you know, it doesn't make a sound. And I was kind of thinking about that a lot. And at first my working title was If a Tree Falls. And as I was working on it more and more, I kind of realized, well, the point of my story is that, well, the trees are, are falling. So it's not if, it's, it's when. Because of the pandemic, I wasn't able to finish it quite in time for the end of class. Uh, rendering it took more than a month. So I had my laptop rendering 16 hours a day, every day for over a month in order to get the final product. So I have a version where there's no fire whatsoever. And uh, it's all added in post-production because it would take way too long to, um, yeah. to render that out, especially with my system here at home. I just didn't have the time to do smoke and fire in a 3D space. So my solution was it's all 2D and it's composited in afterwards. Yeah, I thought that the, the music was really, you know, important to help kind of drive the intensity of the whole thing. Sure. Uh, yeah. So my brother, um, he was a um, music production major at Ramapo and he wrote all of that from scratch. My thesis project is a series of photographs, which I have just thought of a title for, which I named Touch. So it is a collection of digital images that explore gesture, form, and identity through the limited perspective of hands. I use digital photography on my digital camera. I wanted to take like a storytelling approach to bring these photos to life. And I really like the idea of portraiture. I'm mainly a portrait photographer, but I thought instead of focusing just on someone's face, you can tell a completely different story through other parts of their body. And the hands hold so much power that if you photograph someone just like touching like a bottle or like doing something that they normally do out their day, it could create a whole new narrative. And so I kind of just started playing into that. Some are more staged than others. Like some are like, planned and some are completely like in the moment, which I think is like a good mixture of everything. Um, I used people who I'm close to who every their everyday lives and my everyday lives are intertwined. And I created this set of images back before all of this started that um, had a lot to do with telling people's stories. And now I feel like ever since this happened, it kind of has taken on like a different meaning since like we rely on touch so much and now that's something that we like can't do in the same way that we used to so i think that's something that only added to my project for my thesis i also did a body of uh, photographs body of work um mostly focusing on layers kind of the <laughs> layers that we see in front of us and the layers that make up my own mind. So I started working on this um, mostly when I was um, abroad last semester in Italy. Most of the photos are from Italy, some from a couple other places I visited. One of my biggest photographic inspirations is Lee Friedlander and he often puts himself in the images and sometimes it's hard to tell but I try to do that in my own work. Working within the 35 millimeter rectangular picture plane, I attempt to create my own universe inside of each frame. At first glance, the viewer might be overwhelmed and see a symphony of visual chaos. Upon further investigation, one is forced to study the spatial scaffolds and navigate them layer by layer. Each image invites the viewer to come closer, look deeper, and calls into question what they're actually looking at. So I kind of want people to be a little confused, maybe, kind of question the nature of what they're actually seeing and kind of just bring awareness to what's in front of them. I thought it would be good to go to professional galleries uh, and we went to the Chelsea neighborhood. And when you think it was just about two weeks probably before the shit hit the fan. 
looking back, I felt, oh, we were so naive. And what was just coming, you know, almost upon us and was around us, we found out that things had really changed. But we had that, that it was such a fun time. And obviously going to the galleries and seeing these very professional um, like setups that I always walked past but never went inside because I was always too intimidated. <laughs> but it was nice to go into, a, into the spaces with a, a group of like-minded individuals. We started off the day by all like eating like breakfast together and sitting around the table and just reading through everyone's statements helped us get like a bigger like better perspective on what everyone was creating and then going off and having that bonding experience really helped us like come together as a group. We all kind of read each other's artist statements and got a better idea of which direction we were all going in. And the, the moment that we all sat around the table and we were eating Shalom's food and we were drinking our tea and coffee out of his mugs, I don't know, it just felt so um, it just felt so intimate, but also reading through everyone's statement and then actually just starting to talk about the thesis, even though we were talking about it like in class, I don't know, in that moment it just felt real to me. So it was like, oh, like, we're actually doing this, like this is actually going to happen, this is crazy. <laughs> when you break bread with someone, that's when you really feel a sense of community and people's boundaries are kind of dissolved and your guards let down and that's when real connections are actually fostered. The bonding experience of it really helped because I think it helped us work together like better. Like having like even that small knit group of people and then like being able to like really like get to know one another gave us the opportunity to be able to call on them if like we really needed to or we were struggling with something with our thesis and so I think it gave us a better like better tools to communicate with one another and like more of an idea of what like you know what kind of art we each were drawn to. So I guess it was kind of like decided as we were like passing around jobs in the beginning of class when we were still meeting in person that I kind of wanted to like help out with the making of the book. I have previous design experience and so um, that job kind of got put upon me and I was ready to take on that challenge. Um, that challenge kind of became a lot harder once we weren't meeting in person anymore. That cover design kind of just happened in the moment we were having a Zoom a class meeting and we were just talking about like possible designs for the cover and obviously we had like a like here and now, we had some inspiration from the trip, um, but because of this whole pandemic we all I know, came to a consensus that we wanted to include that into our cover or into the catalog itself because you know this is this is what's happening during our thesis so it's very relevant well it was just so wonderful how spontaneous that was and i remember kind of seeing you uh giselle working and but you know not in the screen and wondering what you were doing so i kind of just took out my sketchbook and just started sketching and then everyone liked it and the cover so <laughs> I kind of had to like make some decisions and just show you guys afterwards which was hard but I think everyone was really flexible and really receptive and helpful and between coordinating everyone's artist statements and sending the photos and creating the cover everyone um, really pulled their weight in the end I know I was just the one who put the book together but I wouldn't have had anything to put together if it wasn't for everyone else so there was like a deeper level of understanding and responsibility that came with it and I think everyone really pulled their weight.